on a, a subject of, of the Christian life on the call of a servant. John chapter number 21, if you take your Bibles and turn there, John chapter 21. I'll be talking to uh, our graduating seniors tonight, but really uh, what's good for them is good for all of us. And uh, I'm challenging them tonight at this stepping stone in their life, this path from one part of their life to another. It is an ending, but it's a beginning. Uh, and, and so um, I'm challenging them uh, that at this time we would, uh, you know, have them think about it. But really, uh, every one of us should be thinking about these things all the time. I want to read one verse, we'll pray, and then I'll come back and we'll focus on a broader passage of Scripture. But in uh, John chapter 21 and verse number 22, the Bible says, uh, well, if I can get to the right, okay, here we are. Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? And then this short statement, follow thou me. I want to speak on the call to follow Christ. The call to follow Christ is not uh, separated out to someone on the foreign mission field or someone going to be pastoring a church or in full-time Christian service. Uh, It certainly can be those things, but the call to follow Christ is really uh, for every child of God to follow the Lord. And, uh, and so I want to preach on that subject, but let's pray and ask God to bless the reading of his word. Father, as we've opened and read your word, as we always do, we ask you to bless the reading of it. We cannot add to or, or uh, explain it in any way better than what you've said. But Lord, I pray that we would make an application of it to our lives, to these three uh, graduating seniors, but also to every child of God in this place to question whether or not we are adequately following Christ. And what does it mean to follow Christ? Lord, I pray that we would examine and let the Holy Spirit examine each of our lives uh, to uh, measure us, not one against another, uh, but to measure our our sacrifice compared to uh, where you want us to be. We give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The Bible says here, beginning in this uh, verse number 15, to set the stage, Jesus is talking to Peter, and the Bible says when they had dined, Jesus uh, saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. We have a tendency to want to judge or compare uh, our service for Christ to others. And God says that's, uh, that's a poor judgment. It's a, an unwise thing to do. But I want to just focus on this uh, in the context, this little thought that Jesus states twice, follow me or follow thou me. And I want you to, un- to understand, graduating seniors, as well as every Christian in the room, that the call to follow Christ is a personal call. It is a personal call. 
well, you know, we're following Christ as a church. Uh, listen, you don't follow Christ as a unit without individuals following Christ. A church, a New Testament church, and there are several churches, there are churches represented here tonight. But uh, if, uh, uh, listen, a, a New Testament church, if it means, if, if it's uh, the biblical, uh, biblically uh, uh, arranged, it is made up of individual Christians, people that have named the name of Christ, have been saved and, and baptized, and they are, are united with that church, and so they function as a body uh, for the cause of Christ but it is made up of individual members. Read 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, and you'll find that the Bible describes how that all these members work together so that the body can be productive. But the call to follow the Lord is a personal call. Other people's service does not matter. But Lord, what will, what will this man do? Jesus says, what is that to thee? We would say it this way, perhaps. What does that have to do with your call? Because your call is personal. Uh, not only does God have a specific plan for your life, but he also, just the general call of following Christ must be answered personally by each person. Would you agree with me that uh, in the, my assessment that the call to follow Christ is universal to every born-again child of God. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. But would you also agree that not every Christian answers it equally? And so that, that reminds us how personal the call of God is. Other people's service does not matter. Other people's level of sacrifice does not matter. Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Peter, and, and if we could, without doing violence to the text, if we could um, maybe update our, our, our verbal uh, explanation just a little bit. He said, Peter, there was a day when you dressed yourself, but there's going to come a day when someone else will dress you. There was a day where you decided in the beginning of the day where you went out to, but there's coming a day where someone will carry you where you don't want to go. And the Bible says this Jesus said to signify by what death Peter would honor the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that, that Peter did honor Christ with his death. But Peter, like us, we, said, we, we look around and we say, well, if I'm called to sacrifice to this level, what about other people? Why isn't it, you know, if everybody else, is everybody else called to sacrifice to the same level? And Jesus said, what does that have to do with you? You see, if we are to understand our relationship with Christ, when I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat, when you ladies stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to give an account of the things done in the body, whether good or bad. You're going to give an account of your service, not our collective service. You won't answer for Twin Ports Baptist Church. You'll answer for you. You won't even answer for your family. You'll answer for you. So the call to follow Jesus Christ is a personal call. And every one of us must answer it personally. You three graduating seniors, if you have not already, the call is to you to surrender to follow Christ. You say, well, I don't know if he wants me on a mission field. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about surrendering to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus did not say to Peter, follow me to such and such a city. He said, follow me. He didn't even say, follow me to, to uh, the top of such and such a hill. He said, follow me. And so the call is to, to walk with God, uh, to, be, uh, to be separated unto the Lord. And so it is a personal call. But secondly, it is a preferential call. It is a preferential call. The reason I went back and read the context is so that we can see the backdrop from which Jesus addresses Peter when he, asked, when he says to him, follow thou me. What was the backdrop? Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Yea, Lord, I love you. Well, then feed my lambs, feed my sheep. But he asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And, Jesus, and, and the third time that Jesus asked, Peter was upset. But there's even, when you, when you get into 
the, the, uh, the text of what's being said here, it's even more interesting to me because while we read a, a Bible that's been translated into English, it's also sometimes interesting to find the underlying words uh, before it was translated if there's distinctions to be made. And what I find here is there are two words for love. There's the word that probably many of you have been saved very long. You've heard the word, uh, the Greek word agape. You've used it. You've, you've heard it used by preachers possibly in connection with the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, that he had an agape love for us. That love is a sacrificial, benevolent, heartfelt, giving love. There's another word in this, in this uh, text used for love, and it comes from the word phileo, which has to do with a, uh, a brotherly love, a fondness. Uh, it is not a, as deep a love as an agape love. And what's interesting is that when you uh, look at the words that, that each person is using, when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus used the word for a deeper love. He used the word agape. He was saying, Peter, do you love me from the heart? Do you love me with a sacrificial love? But when Peter answered, he said, Lord, you know that I phileo you, that I am fond of you. That's not what Jesus was asking him. He was asking him, Peter, how deeply do you love me? And, he, and his answer was, Lord, you know I'm fond of you. And he asked him a second time, Peter, do you agape, do you love me? Do you love me deeply from the heart? And Peter answered the same way a second time, Lord, you know that I phileo, you know that I, I, I'm fond of you. When Jesus asked the third time, Jesus came down to Peter's level and he used Peter's word. And he said, Peter, do you phileo? Do you, are you fond of me? And Peter is grieved and he said, Lord, you know all things. And I want you to understand something here this evening. God knows all things. He knows when we sing, oh, how I love Jesus. He knows whether it's just words on the paper or whether it's from the heart. He knows when we say, oh, how I, uh, oh, how I love Jesus or, or that we love the Lord and, and, uh, and we sing the, the choruses, I love you, Lord, and I lift uh, up my voice. And he knows whether or not that is a fondness. And too many Christians are fond of the Lord but they don't, don't love him deeply from the heart. You see, this love, this, this calling of, of Christ to follow me, is a, it is a preferential call. It means that we are more than just fond of Christ. You see, a fondness for Christ gets us to a church age that is Laodicean or casual, careless, lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. But a passionate love for Christ an agape love, the kind of love that Jesus displayed on the cross of Calvary, gets us to following Jesus. It is preferential. It is not a head, but a heart love. And so the call to follow the Lord, young people, is personal. It is for each one of us to answer and for you to say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. But it's also preferential. God wants to know whether or not you love him or are just fond of him. And then I want you to see that the call to follow the Lord is also precise. It is precise. Jesus did not say to Peter, uh, after going through, Peter, do you love me? And all these things, and Peter, this is how you're going to honor me with your death. He didn't say to Peter, and so... You know, choose your own path, choose your adventure, you know, the old choose your adventure books where you get to pick how it ends up. 
No, he said, follow me. It means that it is a precise call to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And we know from the scriptures that to follow Jesus means a life of sacrifice. It means a life of suffering sometimes. There are often times in the Christian life, as it should be, that following Christ will cost us something. It may cost us friends that do not want to be around us anymore if we're going to be sold out for Christ. It might cost us opportunities if we have to turn down things because it goes against our Christian morals and values. It may cost us uh, a position if that sometime if we're asked to, to bend what we believe the Bible says in some way in order to, to participate in something. And, and so the call is very precise to follow Christ. It is a call to full surrender. Notice that Jesus just told Peter, you're going to have to be willing to be carried where you don't choose to go. You're going to have to be willing to wear clothes that others choose for you. Boy, think about how this depicts Jesus on the cross of Calvary, where he did not choose his clothing. The way he was attired was chosen for him. Now, I understand the will of God, and I'm not diminishing that at all. And I understand that he says, no man took my life, he laid it down. I get that. But also, I also understand that there were men there that put him on the cross that day. They carry, listen, he carried the cross, but into a designated place of suffering and death. How important is it for us to understand that this following Jesus, is, it, what he implies is a complete surrender to fully surrender to him, to be carried to a, a, a different destination than the destination of your choosing. The truth is that as you young people sit here today, you don't know where your life is going to end up. I got good news for you. You don't have to know today. <laughs> Amen. There's no test today that you have to say, okay, where are you going to be 15 years from now? <laughs> Aren't you glad? But what you do need to know is whether or not you're going to follow Jesus Christ to a place of his choosing. To be a, a, a disciple of Christ is more than just claiming it. It's living it. It's a precise call to follow Jesus. It is preferential to love him above all others. It is personal in that our sacrifice and our service is not dependent on what anybody else does or does not do. And I want to challenge each of you young people tonight to answer the call of the Lord. You say, well, what's the call? Is it a call to, as I mentioned this morning, the call to uh, Burmese missions? Is, is it a call uh, to uh, uh, martyrdom? Is it a call to, uh, to ministry? Is it a call to foreign lands with people of a, of a strange tongue? The Bible says if I'd have sent you to people of a strange tongue, they would have listened. Oh, listen, what is the call? You say, what is the call? The call is to follow Christ wherever he might lead you. We are blessed. You are blessed. You have been blessed with families that love God. You have been blessed with ample examples, both good that can be followed, and you've lived long enough without any, you've matured enough to see people make wrong choices, go the wrong direction, and bring down heaps of heartache on their own life. I mean, that's just the truth of it, is it not, parents? By the time you get to where you graduate from high school, if you pay attention at all, you've seen people make wrong choices. And it is, you are, it, it is high time you are definitely at a place in your life where the choice is yours to follow Jesus Christ. Use the blessings that God has given you 
parents and grandparents, friends, pastors, teachers that he's given you that you can follow that have been have taken it seriously where the Bible says, be thou an example. And there's people that have been an example for you. But the choice to follow Christ is yours. As it is for each one of us here. The choice to follow Christ is ours. Moms and dads, will you follow Christ? Sons and daughters, will you follow Christ? Husbands and wives, will you follow Christ? Grandmas, grandpas, will you follow Christ? Do we love him supremely? Have we answered the personal call and the call to full surrender? Say, Lord, whatever it is that you desire, I willingly give it to you. As the Apostle Paul got to the place where he said, I've realized that the things that I thought were gained to me are not worth anything in God's treasure. And so he said, I count them but lost that I might win Christ. We need to get to that place, each one of us. As we bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment of invitation, When we preach the word of God, we want to give an opportunity to to respond to the preaching of God's word, not just for these three graduating seniors tonight, but for each one of us as well, the call to follow Christ. Jesus said, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Well, preacher, I'm in a church that doesn't do this or doesn't do that. What's that got to do with you? You follow Christ. Well, preacher, I have a family that many of them are unsaved or many of them don't, you know, they don't live uh, the Christian life. What's that got to do with you? Follow, you follow Christ. Well, preacher, my friends are, you know, they're one thing at church and another thing away from church and uh, they're not sincere, they're not genuine. What has that got to do with you? You follow Christ. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let's stand to our feet.